So high frequency trading becomes a game of who can get the information the fastest or who can buy it the quickest and then who has the best algorithm to capitalize on that information. And of course, the final piece is the closer you are to the stock market or the stock exchange, the faster you will be able to execute orders. High frequency trading is trading at a lightning speed in milliseconds, faster than a human can trade. To me, there are three parts to high frequency trading. The actual computer or server that is being used for high frequency trading, the algorithm that is installed on these servers, and the proximity of these servers or computers to the stock exchange. So let me explain. Let's start with the algorithm. The algorithm is nothing more than a computer program that solves calculation problems. A server that is installed on has to be a fast server in order to execute trades. And the third component is the proximity of that server to the stock exchange. Logically, if a server is like right next to the stock exchange, it's going to be able to execute orders a lot faster than somebody who lives like a thousand miles away. So one of these issues that came up in the when high frequency traders or trading was just being introduced was that a lot of people lost their jobs because of high frequency trading. Because high frequency trading is lightning speed faster than humans can can buy and sell orders. So nowadays all most of the trading happens electronically. A good example to look at how things have changed is to watch a movie called Trading Places. This was a movie that came out, I think, in the late 80s or early 90s. And the it featured the actors um, Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. Like a specific scene that always sticks in my mind when I watch that movie. And definitely watch that movie. It's a good movie. It's a funny movie. But one of the scenes that always sticks in my mind is the trading floor. So on a trading floor in a stock exchange, in a public stock exchange, you see people buy and sell orders by yelling buy and sell orders and they have the buy and sell orders on a piece of paper so when you look at the floor you see a lot of uh, pieces of paper on the floor so think about what stock exchanges look like now there are not that many people on the trading floors it's all digital it's all electronic let me give you an example let me talk about human speed versus computer speed Let's say me as a human, I'm a day trader. I log into my brokerage account and on a separate screen, I do my research to see which shares I want to buy or sell. You know, typical buy low, sell high or buy high, sell low, which is also called short selling. I just noticed that a press release came out for McDonald's. McDonald's, they are, they did extremely well in the last quarter. They hit earnings they actually exceeded expected earnings by three percent and in that press release it also states that they're also seeing that in the the next quarter they will also ex they also expect to beat earnings by three percent so i read this article it takes me maybe like five minutes to read this article i'm like awesome i'm gonna try to capitalize on this information so I, on my separate screen, I'm logged into my brokerage account and I want to buy some shares in McDonald's in order to buy them low because I'm expecting that with the good information, with the good news that came out, I'm expecting that the price of McDonald's is going to go up. So I'm buying now and I want to sell at a higher price. Human speed. Now let's look at how potentially a computer algorithm could do this. Not saying that this is happening, but this is potentially what could happen. So at the same time that this press release came out, let's say it came out at 10 a.m., within a fraction of a second, an algorithm scraped the news article looking for specific keywords or specific indicators, such as McDonald's beat expected earnings by 3%. This data, this information is being analyzed by the algorithm and then immediately goes to the 
the stock exchange and starts buying and selling at a profit. After about five minutes, you enter in the trade and you start to buy and sell. Meanwhile, the algorithm has already made a hefty profit of thousands of dollars or even hundreds of thousands of dollars because the algorithm was able to analyze and go through the information a lot faster than a human can at a fraction of a second. Meanwhile, it took me a couple of minutes to read through the article and make a decision. So high frequency trading becomes a game of who can get the information the fastest or who can buy it the quickest and then who has the best algorithm to capitalize on that information. And of course, the final piece is the closer you are to the stock market or the stock exchange, the faster you will be able to execute orders. Two manipulation methods that high frequency trading companies use are spoofing and quote stuffing. Let's talk about spoofing first. Spoofing is nothing more than putting out fake buy or sell orders in a large amount in order to profit of the other side of the trade. So what do I mean? For example, let's say I want to buy shares in Clorox at a cheap price, cheaper than what the market is currently selling for. What I'll do as a high frequency trading company is I'll put out a bunch of sale orders for Clorox and these sale orders, they pile up. They keep getting larger and larger, giving the illusion that there are a lot of sellers for Clorox. What I then do, it, this potentially lowers the cost of the price of that particular stock because other investors see that, oh, there's so many sellers, the price comes down. As a high frequency trading company, what I do then is I take the other side of the trade, I cancel all those fake sale orders, and I buy Clorox at a cheap price. Boom, done. And this happens at lightning speed. With the quote stuffing manipulation tactic, what a high frequency trading company does is it sends out a lot of fake orders and then it cancels them. Then it sends out a bunch of orders again and it cancels them. And that's a cycle that it goes through constantly. What this does is these orders need to be processed, but because there's so many orders that gets pushed out and then canceled, it slows down the stock market. You're pretty much looking at a mist of real and fake orders. And as a high frequency trading company, I can go through that mist of orders and I know which ones are fake and which ones are real so I can pick and choose and capitalize on the real ones while everybody is still focusing on okay what is fake what is not fake and trying to process those orders meanwhile they're getting cancelled so code stuffing is a highly illegal method that's being used by high frequency trading companies and when found out they do get penalized with a fine for using this method. One way to limit quote stuff from happening is if there was a minimum holding period for an order. So for example, if a high frequency trading company puts out an order, it needs to be available or active for at least one or two seconds. Because like currently there is no minimum holding period. It They put out the orders and they cancel it within milliseconds. But if there was some minimum holding period of a second or two seconds, seconds it would diminish or even kill quote stuffing. 